At this stage, we assume that the firm has already decided how much output to produce. Now, since in general there will be different ways to produce this level of output Q, the firm still faces an interesting problem. That is, the firm must choose how to produce the level of output Q. Now, the objective is to produce Q by spending the least amount of money. That is, to choose the basket of inputs LK that minimizes the cost of producing Q units of output. Of course, uh, the choice of the firm depends on the price of the inputs. We assume that the price of the inputs are given. We call W the price of one unit of labor and R the price of one unit of capital. Um, but what does it mean that the price of the inputs are given? It means uh, that the firm has no control over these prices. That the firm takes these prices as given when deciding which combination of inputs to buy. That is, the firm is a price taker in the markets for inputs. Now, let me ask you a question. If the firm decides to buy 5 units of labor and 10 units of capital, what is the total cost incurred by the firm? Well, if the price of one unit of labor is W and the price of one unit of capital is R, then the total cost of the basket of inputs L equals 5 and K equals 10 is 5 times W plus 10 times R. Very good. In general, we can write the total cost of the basket of inputs LK as W times L plus R times K. Now, we have all the ingredients to express the cost minimization problem of the firm. The firm will choose among the baskets of inputs that produce the desired quantity of output Q, the combination of inputs that minimize the total cost. More precisely, the firm chooses the combination of inputs LK that minimizes the cost of the inputs, that is WL plus RK, subject to the constraint of producing Q unit of output. Is it clear? I guess so. I think you are saying the following. The firm considers all the baskets of inputs on the isoquant corresponding to Q units of output. For example, the baskets of inputs A, B, and C and then chooses the basket on the isoquant that costs the least. Excellent. Now I want to introduce the concept of isocost line. An isocost line is composed by all the baskets of inputs with the same total cost. For example, assume that the price of one unit of labor, W, is equal to 4, and the price of one unit of capital, R, is equal to 2. What is the isocost line that passes through the basket of inputs A with 5 units of labor and 8 units of capital? Well, the basket of inputs A costs 5 times 4 plus 8 times 2, which is 36. Therefore, the isocost line that passes through A is composed of all the input baskets that cost $36. That's right. Graphically, Let's first illustrate the input basket A with 5 units of labor and 8 units of capital. The combination of inputs A costs $36. And the isocost line that passes through A has slope negative W over R, in our example negative 2. Now, if the concept of isocost line is clear, we can put together the two concepts of isoquant and isocost line to characterize the cost minimizing basket of inputs. What is the cost minimizing basket of inputs? Okay, remember what we said about the cost minimization problem of the firm. The firm chooses the combination of inputs LK that minimizes the cost of the inputs, that is W times L plus R times K subject to the constraint of producing Q units of output. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Good. Now, the basket of inputs that solves the problem for the firm is the cost-minimizing basket of inputs. In other words, the cost-minimizing basket of inputs is the combination of inputs that minimizes the cost of producing Q units of output. The cost-minimizing basket of inputs must satisfy two conditions. The first condition is called feasibility condition. 
The cost minimizing basket is on the ISO quant corresponding to the level of output Q. The second condition is the tangency condition. At the cost minimizing basket, the ISO cost line is tangent to the ISO quant. The next figure represents the cost minimizing basket. The cost minimizing basket of inputs, indicated by L star K star, is on the ISO quant and the ISO cost line that passes through the basket is tangent to the ISO quant. Now, what is the economic interpretation of these two conditions for the optimal basket? The feasibility condition is simple. It just says that the firm must produce Q units of output. The tangency condition says that if the firm is choosing the combination of inputs that minimize the cost, then the slope of the isoquant is equal to the slope of the isocost line. That is, the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is equal to the price of labor in terms of capital. This condition is very important, and I would like to express it in a different way. Recall that the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital can be expressed as the ratio of the marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital. This means that if the firm is choosing the combination of inputs optimally, then the marginal product of labor divided the marginal product of capital must be equal to the price of labor relative to capital. Now, this condition can be written as the marginal product of labor divided the unit price of labor must be equal to the marginal product of capital divided the price of capital. This condition can be interpreted in the following way. A dollar spent in acquiring the input labor must give the same increase in output than a dollar spent in acquiring the input capital.